Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting and welcome back to the channel and of course the Bluefield Sports Gun Room. Now there's been a gun that many of you have requested a review of from pretty much when I first started the channel and that is the Sig Sauer 5 Two, two. Now, when I first started shooting here in the UK, this was one of few options available for a 2.2 semi-automatic. Now, being based off of the 5.52 Sig Sauer, it already had a lot of popularity. People really liked that rifle, and to own a clone of it here within the UK it was very, very appealing. This, unlike the HK416 or HK MP5, this isn't exactly a clone. This is actually built from the ground up to be a 2.2 uh, rimfire. Now, when I first started shooting, it did occur to me or cross my mind to get one of these as my competition gun. It really was a toss up between the 416, the 1522, and the 5. Two, two. My reason for not going for this one is because it's not AR. Whilst the 1522 isn't fully mil spec, you do need some bespoke uh, customization like handguard nuts to be able to use an AR uh, handguard on it. This is pretty much all proprietary. Uh, so you're very much restricted on what you can change out, what you can upgrade, and what you can customize. But it built a very good reputation for being very, very reliable. And I've witnessed that myself in the testing. Now, some of you are gonna be uh, very keen-eyed and notice that the gun that I was shooting wasn't the gun that I have in front of me. It was actually bought down by a subscriber and that was the standard classic version that I was shooting. This is the SWAT version with the quad Picatinny rail. I ran you know, two to 300 rounds of various ammunition. I put through CCI Mini Mag, my go-to, ran absolutely perfectly with that. And it also ran really well with CCI Standard and some MagTech. I know I don't like to use that for reviews, but I'm using it more and more because if a gun will run MagTech, then it goes up quite a few notches in my uh, estimation. Now, talking about the different models, this one being the SWAT, uh, there's the classic, which is what I was shooting. You also have the commando, which has a suppressor. You then have the SWAT commando that has the quad rail and the suppressor. Then you have an, a target version, which has an aluminium front end free floating barrel. So there's lots to choose from, but the bad news on this rifle is that I'm pretty sure that in 2015, as per Wikipedia, they discontinued them. This does seem a bit funny because there are many places that you can buy them here in the UK today. So I don't know whether they just did an absolute mammoth production batch of them, stopped uh, production, and now they're just selling off what they had made, but they are still available. Uh, I think getting the different specific variants is going to be a little trickier, but certainly the SWAT and the Classic, there's a number of places that you can get them. If you're coming from a AR-22, there are gonna be a few differences uh, to sort of get on with. It doesn't have, of course, the rear charging handle. You have this charging handle on the side there. It's easy to get onto. This, of course, is a, a clone, uh, a 2.2 replica uh, of a combat rifle. So it's not exactly designed for competition. It's just meant to be uh, built like a tank and able to be run in any situation. The safety is a little difficult to get on and off, just the position of it and also the side. I have seen that there are enlarged safeties available for this gun, so that is one of the options that you can go for, one of the, the upgrades that you could fit, uh, but it's certainly not as natural or easy to get onto as, say, an AR. Your magazine release is ambi, which is a nice feature. You've got the button uh, there, roughly in the same place as an AR, and then you've also got the lever uh, there, so you can detach that. Uh, no problem. In terms of the magazines, they're actually made by Black Dog. So Black Dog make the 50 round drum magazine that I have for the 1522. They make a, a host of different magazines for a host of different companies. Now, whilst 
the magazines that come with this might be branded uh, Sig Sauer, they are made by Black Dog. You can get it in a 10 or 25 round capacity, uh, so pretty standard there. This gun has a two-stage trigger. Being based off of a combat rifle, it's not exactly a competition trigger. It's uh, two-stage with a lot of um, sort of take up, and then it's quite spongy uh, and, and soft with a lot of reset. Certainly not something you're gonna be setting rapid uh, times with on a plate rack or even in a mini rifle. I don't know if you can get an upgrade for this trigger, but I'm sure any gunsmith would be able to do um, some fettling, maybe get it a little bit crisper, a little bit lighter. Another nice feature of this rifle, and I believe this is available on all the variants, is that it has a folding stock. Um, a little bit of a uh, sneak peek I put out on Facebook, uh, I was actually shooting it, it can be fired, uh, shooting it with the stock uh, collapsed like that and the gun is still UK legal in terms of its length and of course barrel length even with the stock folded, that's why you're allowed to do it. If it was shorter than 24 inches overall, uh, you, you'd have to pin the stock unfortunately. So that's again a nice feature, it is a bit rugged. Uh, so it's a nice big clunk in there and you really got to give it a nice yank to get it off of there. Uh, so it's nice and easy to transport, nice and compact. Talking about the length and the barrel length, all of the variants come with a 16 inch barrel. Pretty standard for a rifle like this. Now, would I recommend this rifle? Now, if you really like the look of it, if you're a big Six Hour fan, then there's no reason not to. They are reliable, they're long lasting. I know people that have had these for many, many years without an issue. If you're thinking of taking it into competition, on the other hand, I would stay away from it. From it. it is a nice gun overall, it's a nice option in 2.2 uh, rimfire and semi-automatic, uh, but it's just not a competition gun. It's quite heavy, it's quite bulky, the trigger on it is very, very service rifle, uh, and because it's so limiting in terms of the accessories and upgrades available, you're gonna have a hard time honing it in to get the absolute uh, most out of the platform. It is, for me, a bit of fun, something that you can go and maybe enter some uh, club level competitions, take it down the range, uh, have a laugh with it, put a smile on your face, and then put it back in the, in the safe. Whilst it's built from the ground up as 2.2, it is still mimicking or replicating the full bore version, and you're always gonna be limited uh, because of that, just like with the or 1.6 or the HK MP5 from Umarex. But yes, I certainly wouldn't avoid it um, in its entirety. It's a fun, great little gun that is gonna put a lot of smiles on a lot of people's faces. Personally, you know, I want something that I can take out to competition as well. Certainly for a collector, if you're interested in service or combat rifles, uh, then it's definitely going to tickle your fancy. It's built to a high quality, it works reliably, uh, and you're gonna have a lot of fun with it. So there we go, guys, my full review of the Sig Sauer 522 SWAT slash classic version. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments section below. Make sure you're subscribed for future videos and as always guys, I hope to see you soon.